Good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in and watching our worship service this morning. We hope you've had a good Christmas and you've had some rest and haven't had too much. Uh, we do thank you for tuning in this morning and we're looking forward to Laura Louise uh, leading us in worship and Laura Jean and John Mark playing instruments this morning. But most of all, we pray that you'll be blessed through the message that Stephen Barclay uh, is going to be bringing to us from God's word this morning. I just have a few announcements uh, that we have to make. That is, we're going to be meeting uh, like this for the next few weeks uh, due to uh, the changing uncertainty around COVID. And we do pray uh, that everyone will stay safe. And we do uh, uh, thank everyone for bearing with us during this time. Next week, um, Alan Burroughs will be bringing our announcements and Sammy Lee and Christian will be leading worship and God willing, Stephen Bartley will be bringing us a word from, from God's word again next week. And can I just finish uh, by wishing everyone a very blessed and happy new year. And uh, we're just praying God's blessing over each and every one of you and our community for 2021. God bless. See you later.
Hi guys, hope you're keeping well. Hope you're all rested after the Christmas break and uh, and not uh, overeating too much of that. But we really want to look forward uh, to the end of this week. It's going to be the start of 2021. Uh, 2020 has been interesting, um, but we're coming into a new year. And with that, there's an awful lot of reflection that we do. There's an awful lot of thinking we can do and a lot of, a lot of self-examination we sometimes do at this time of year. And I think that's really healthy. I think we need to come aside with the Holy Spirit and spend time with him and start to just work with him and, and ask him, Lord, is there anything in my heart that needs dealt with for this new year? Is there anything you want me to make amends on in this year? Is there is there anything that I need to correct? That's really important at this time of year when, when things are a bit quieter and we've got a lot of time to think and we are sort of looking ahead. It's really good to do that. It's also really important to be asking yourself, are you in the will of God for this season? Has God revealed you revealed to you his word um, for what he wants you to do at this time? And I would encourage you to do that. Seek him for a word for 2021. Seek him for a word for this next period of your life. And he would guide you and he would lead you. I want to read a few verses here um, from Luke chapter 9. And this might sound really unusual for an end of year sort of summary or an end of year sort of message. But I feel these things are really important and I think they'll be of a help to us. I want to read Luke chapter 9 and uh, verse 1 and we'll start from there. And this is what we read about Jesus. He then called his 12 disciples and he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He said unto them, take nothing for your journey, neither staves nor scrip, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house you enter into, there abide and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you, when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. What's fascinating about this passage that we've read here is that Jesus is wanting to build up a kingdom people. And my prayer, my desire, my dream, my longing is to see kingdom people raised up at this time, not just church people, not just born again Bible believing Christians, as good as that is. We want to see kingdom people raised up. And kingdom people is what Jesus is teaching here in these verses. He's teaching his disciples the ropes of the kingdom, how to sort of work in the kingdom of God, how to focus and, and, and get down to what God wants you to do and how to be effective for God. That's all about the kingdom of God. And the thing that's really interesting is that first and foremost, he tells us, if you want to be a kingdom person, you need to rediscover the authority and the power that God has given to you. Kingdom living and kingdom lifestyle comes down to this one thing. You rediscover the authority and the power that you already have in Jesus. Many Christians don't believe they have authority or power at all. They feel that they're powerless. They feel like they're so useless. They feel that they're so weak and feeble and faint. But that is not the person Jesus has called you to be. You are an authoritative person in him and you're a powerful person in him. And in fact, Jesus said he gave them power and authority over all demons and over every disease. And that's something we have to receive in faith is that that's what the word of God says. As much as these men were disciples, so we are disciples if we're following Jesus and obeying his word. And we have an authority in our lives to make a difference. And Jesus says in verse two, with that authority and with that power, he says, go out and preach the gospel of the kingdom. Go and tell other people of the fact that God can do anything. Go and tell them that God can heal, disease, uh, heal diseases. God can break off the fetters. God can meet needs. God can be everything a person needs. And most importantly, that God can forgive us of our sins and bring us into a relationship with himself. That's the most important message we can share with anybody. 
And in 2021, it will be our desire, our mission, our burden that many people would hear the gospel of the kingdom of God, have the opportunity to come into relationship with God and discover that everything in his kingdom is true. Everything of God's kingdom of light is, is completely honest. It's completely accurate. It's no pipe dream. This is the real McCoy. That's what we want people to see. And Jesus says, go and use your authority to tell others about the kingdom of God. He goes on to say as well, go and heal the sick. Pray for people. Not just, you know, I'll pray for you behind the scenes, but, but even take opportunities to say, can I pray for you now? And you will find even those op opportunities will open up and you'll have chances to not only pray with people, but to point them towards Jesus in your conversation. And you know what's amazing? This is what I, I really find awesome about this um, commission that Jesus gives to these men. He tells them in verse three, he says, don't take another thing with you. I mean, they were to go empty handed into this mission. They were to go without any food. They were to go without any money. They were to leave their wallets behind. They had no change of clothes. It was just raw, naked faith. That's what these men were going in. And can I tell you, for 2021, we don't know what lies ahead of us. We don't know what's going to happen economically. We don't know what's going to happen. And many people are struggling even now. Can I tell you this? Jesus sent out those 12 men with absolutely zero in their bank accounts. Zero to provide for them. But the amazing thing is, by the end of their journey with Jesus, Jesus turned to them and said, did you lack anything? Did you lose anything? And they said, Master, no. Everything was provided for us. And I want to tell you today that if you may be going through a tough time, you may be going through a difficult time, but God will look after his children. He'll always do that. David said he never saw the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. And God will look after you even in this time that we're going through. COVID, Brexit, everything. God is a provider. He's a father. He knows what you need before you ask for it. So rest in him and have confidence in him. So you think about what we've already said, to operate in the kingdom of God, even for 2021, is about rediscovering your authority. It's about taking just opportunities to talk to others about Jesus. It's about living on faith, depending on God, not depending on things or people or processes, but we trust in God. That's what we need to do. But this is what I want to bring out to you just as a, as a sort of word for the end of 2020 as we come into 2021. And it's just this very simple statement. Brush the dirt of your feet. Brush the dirt of your feet. And Jesus says that to his disciples in verse 5. He says, this is good kingdom protocol. He said, wash the dirt of your feet. Shake the dust of your feet. And what he was saying was, it's, it's like detaching yourself from negative things that would stop you going on with God. You need to be able to shake the dust of your feet. And you think about it, you know, even when you go into somebody's house, one of the things you'll first see at a person's back door is a mat. It's a mat on the ground and you're expected to, to brush your shoes against that so all the dirt is taken off your feet. So they're not going to just plow through their kitchen and stain their tiles or walk through their plush living room with beautiful carpet and, and embed the dirt in it. I mean, Jesus taught us good house manners, but he's not talking here about, you know, somebody's house or that. He's teaching us kingdom principles. He's teaching us how the kingdom of God operates. And what God wants to do for many of us is to take us into new kingdom opportunities. He wants to open up new doors for us and bring us into new places, new spaces, new graces. He wants to bring us into that. But you cannot bring the dirt of the past past the threshold of God's new opportunities. You can't do that. And 2021 is like an open door for us. There are kingdom possibilities, there's authority, power, opportunities to share the gospel, opportunities to see God working, opportunities to prove God's faithfulness. But you must wipe the dust of your feet, Jesus says. It's really interesting, by the way, in John 13 and 10, Jesus says to the disciples, he says, you are clean, but you need to wash your feet. That's what he said to the disciples, that if we're disciples of Jesus, we are clean. Because of the gospel, the gospel that tells us the blood of Jesus will cleanse us of all sin. We are clean today 
I mean, I am clean before God's presence. I am accepted in the beloved. I am justified by faith. I'm a righteous man, not for anything I have done, but my faith is in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And that has been given to me as a gift. But you see, in my walk with God, dirt can catch on my feet. And so what Jesus said, you've been cleansed, but your feet can pick up dirt. And I want to just talk about a few things that maybe it'll be helpful for us to shape dirt up our feet. Some examples. The first thing is the dirt of sin. And the Bible says to keep our hearts with all diligence, because out of it come the issues of life. The old Christians used to talk about keeping short accounts. And can I encourage you to do that? At this time, maybe you're not walking as close to the Lord as you should be, but you know what has caused you to walk away from him. You know what has caused you to maybe slide back a little bit and you're not as close to him as you should be. You need to come into a fresh repentance. You need to shake the dust of sin from off your feet. You need to come to the Lord and say, Lord, look, I've been doing this. I've been doing that. I've tolerated things in my life. I've accepted things in my life. I've allowed things in my life. And I'm coming today to say, I'm sorry. And I pray for the blood of Jesus to cleanse me all over again. And you know what? When you shake the dust of your feet, you'll find that new kingdom opportunities will open up for you. I want to encourage you, examine yourself, take stock of your heart. Make sure your heart is pure as best as you know it. Make sure your conscience is clear and good at this particular time and shake that dust of sin off your life. Another thing I'll encourage you to do is this. Shake the dust of disappointments of your life. It is amazing to me that I have met many Christians who are living as best for the Lord as they can. They pray, they read the Bible, they do all these things. But what I have often found is that, you know, when you talk to them, it's as if there's like a glass ceiling over their heads. It's like as if there's a possibility in God, but it's very limited. And when you begin to dig a little deeper, you, you sort of wonder, well, why don't you believe God could do that? Why don't you believe God could do that? Why, why don't you feel he can help you in this situation you're in? And immediately they'll bring up a disappointment from maybe years and years ago. Maybe it was a time when prayer didn't seem answered. Maybe it was a time when expectations were for God to do something and he seemingly didn't do it. Maybe it was that you had a trusted friend and you thought that they would never betray you, but they did. And disappointment can come so easily into our lives. And what disappointment does is that it, it really poisons us. It really kills faith. It kills our expectation. It, it really dampens our hopes in God. And what disappointment will always do is to tell us a lie that God isn't good, that God isn't faithful, that God doesn't care, that God's against us and he's not for us. All of those are lies. But that has come from the disappointment. That's the dirt of disappointment. You need to shake the dirt of disappointment, even if you physically or literally have to do that, where you go outside your house and you take the shoes of your feet and you hit them together, not because it's any way, uh, you know, doing anything practically, but I mean spiritually, you're making a declaration. I am shaking the dust of my feet. I remember reading recently of a, of a man who was a preacher and he was ministering in a particular church. And he, he just felt as if the leadership of that church were not entirely happy with him. And they brought him into a board meeting and they literally gave him 50 uh, things they didn't like about him. Uh, 50 things they wrote down about what they did not like about him. And he was so shocked because they said like stuff like you, you preach too loud and you sweat too much. And he said, well, how can I control that? Like... But as he left that board meeting, the Holy Spirit said to him, shake the dust of your feet. And that's what that man literally did. He took the shoes of his feet as he left that church and he, he wiped the dust off to say, I'm severing myself off from that disappointing experience. That's something you need to do as well. Sever off disappointment from up your life. Another thing to do is shake off the dirt of division. So much of Christian walking and, and, and walking with uh, each other can be so divisive because we have differences of views and differences of opinion. But remember this, if we accept each other, we can disagree with each other. But if our unity is based upon agreement, when we disagree, we will divide. So it's really important to accept each other in love, even regardless of all the stuff that's around that person, 
and we begin to say, Lord, I have held on to divisive things. I've held on to things in my life that have soured relationships. And I want to I want to just sever that off from my life. I want to take that dust off my life as well. And another thing I'll maybe say to us is this. You need to shake off the dirt of despair. And you know what? In the atmosphere right now that we're, we're living in, that 2020, there's so much despair. There's so much hopelessness. There's so much heaviness that people are carrying. And people, you know, are just carrying that atmosphere. And if you're not too careful, you can pick that up as well. But you need to be able to cleanse the dust of your feet today. And what you'll find with clean feet, God will open new kingdom opportunities for you. And you will be able to operate in authority and power. You'll be able to share good news with people. You will be able to prove God's unerring faithfulness in every scenario of life. But Jesus said it so clear. You need to cleanse the dust from off your feet. It's not so simple when you think about it. I mean, if you felt, if you went to the beach and you got sand in between your toes, you would feel that and you would just go and wash your feet and that would be it all done. And yet sometimes we carry issues in our lives and we make them far more complicated than they really are. They are just like dust in our feet that we need to wash off. So folks, I want to bless you for 2021. I bless you and your families and your loved ones. I pray that you will just increase in the knowledge of the kingdom of God in your lives. I pray that you will discover every good thing that God has for you. And you will just go from glory to glory and faith to faith. So may God bless you. And then we meet again. It will be really good to see you. God bless.